few specific uh, uh, measures of this. Um, obviously, this is an F major. Some things that would be very helpful to practice F major scale, full range, various articulations. But it, more specifically to this age, we have uh, basically three arpeggios that, that come back. Uh, your first eight measures consist of F major arpeggio, B flat major arpeggio, and then the C dominant seventh arpeggio. You practice those three arpeggios in, you know, again, full range of the horn, different articulation patterns, specifically what you see up there, the slur two, slur two pattern. You basically got your first eight measures nailed right there. Um, you want to be careful um, of a couple of specific things, and, and I'll point these out within the first eight measures. So much of this at the beginning and then later on as well, um, we get a lot of repeated notes from, say, the second and third note of each beat, the end of the beat to the beginning of the next beat, a lot of repeated notes. So you want to be careful when those things do not repeat. For example, if you look at uh, the end of bar four going into bar five. The A does not repeat across the bar line there. It's a very common thing to sort of get in the groove of that. So be careful with those places. Uh, basically, from, for the next several measures, you have a change of note from the end of the bar to the beginning of the next bar. So just be careful with those spots. And also be careful the articulation pattern that gets set up right from the beginning. Slur two, slur two, slur two. It changes a bar eight. And you have to be ready for that very rapid articulation that has to be executed in bar eight from that, the nice slurring kind of legato pattern to the staccato notes. And that would be uh, an issue throughout this, uh, this particular age. Um, one of the uh, techniques that you can use for any technical A2, uh, not just this, but we'll apply a couple of things to this, is to, to change the rhythms around. It's probably a technique that some of you uh, either teach or have worked on with, with your teachers. But um, the technique of these straight sixteenth notes, changing them into different rhythms. For example, uh, and I'll, I'll use this technique in a couple of the trickiest spots in here. Um, I'm going to start here. Can you scroll that up to where 13 is about there? Yeah, I'm going to start at measure 13. That's now at the top of the page. Because these next few bars are pretty tricky bars. And this is one of those techniques where we're taking this, this straight sixteenth note rhythm and we're gonna, what we're going to do is change it into a dotted sixteenth thirty second rhythm. And we're going to keep the articulation pattern there. Take that rhythm, turn it around. Again, many of you uh, may be familiar with this uh, practice technique. And so forth. And what that does is it, it, it displaces rhythms, it puts notes closer together than they really are in the music. And what I like to tell my own students is what you're kind of doing is you're playing a game with the music. So that hopefully after, it's not going to work in five minutes, but hopefully after consistent practice like this, it will make that seem much easier, much more consistent, and uh, you don't have to worry about it nearly as much. Obviously, those few bars, basically 13 on down, I would say, to the, the one measure rest, that's some of the real, real tricky stuff in here. And all of those patterns can be real helpful. I want to point out one measure in particular, measure 16. Okay, if you look at measure 16, uh, by the way, that, there's an errant mark over the third sixteenth note over the, that, that's an A as it's printed, but in, in, in my copy of the book there's that mark there that looks a little confusing. That's often played incorrectly uh, because of where the octaves occur. The octaves don't occur where we might think they should. Okay? They occur from the second to the third note and then the fourth note to the first note. Sometimes we want to turn that pattern around, so be very careful with that. Here are a couple of ways I would recommend practicing that in addition to the different rhythmic uh, formulas that I just uh, presented to you. And I always think it's important to start in the measure before. Because you isolate that one measure and you get it nailed, 
but you have to be able to get into it as well. Here's one technique that I'd like to show you that I think can be very helpful in that section again, starting in measure 15. <laughs>